Hello my fabulous book friends, welcome back to my channel and today I thought I'd do something slightly different. Um, I have a book embosser that I bought like a long time ago and I decided I would emboss quite a few books and talk about my publishing career because I always get questions about it. So the book embosser that I have is from LADD or LAD Stamps. Um, I'll find their website and link it down for you below. But actually, fun fact, I bought this because it was like a, a congratulatory gift to myself when I got the job that I'm currently in, which is Dundurn Press. I'm the marketing coordinator and community manager. It's a lot of words, but I, that's just what it is. So I bought this embosser a long time ago. It's literally just like my Instagram name. Um, let me show you because I was testing it out because again, I haven't used it in a while. So I'm like, let me do a couple practice books um so there you go i hope you can see it i think you can see that yes so that is what my embosser says so i figured because i have so many books on my tbr so let's just emboss as much as i can today while i talk to you uh, for this video and you know in case i like give away a few like down the road at least my instagram handle is there so they'll know where it came from so uh, let me be clear before I actually get into it. So I live in Canada. Um, the Canadian publishing landscape is way different than the US landscape. Plus I also work at very Canadian run companies. So like I don't work for like HarperCollins or Penguin. I've never worked for a multinational company. I don't know if I ever will. Um, I don't interview well. So chances of that happening are like slim to none. <laughs> But I mean, a girl can dream, right? A girl can dream. So, you know, just a heads up, like, oh my God, this is signed? I had no idea, the chai factor. How did I not know that this book was signed? Oh my God, sorry. I'm just discovering these books all over, but wow, that's so fun. Anyways, um, yeah, so I knew in high school that I really wanted to work in publishing because it just kind of makes sense. Plus, you know, when you're in high school and you take like all of those career testing stuff and quizzes and all that things um so the one job that was like always continuous in every quiz i took because i took a million of them like anything online i took it and it always was like book publishing so or specifically editorial but like everyone wants to be an editor so i'm not surprised that once i got to my publishing certificate like i'm just not an editor i suck excuse me while i drag oops oh no too many books. I'm just trying to drag a huge pile of books. You can kind of see it there um, to the other side. So it's easier to emboss. All right, I think, I think that's the right angle. But anyway, so I knew in high school that I really wanted to work in book publishing. At first it was editorial because like everyone wants to be an editor and that's just the basic um, like job posting that everybody knows in publishing. So, you know, I was like, well, I want to get into publishing. I figured out early on that like, you know, what I actually needed to do to get into publishing. So I saw that they had a thing called publishing certificates in university, but usually the requirement for that is like a university degree. So I'm like, okay, I'll do my English major and then I'll go hopefully apply to like the Centennial College publishing certificate program, which is the one I ended up doing. Um, and then getting my foot in the door like that. So when I was in high school, I started my bl book blog, Reading Maria. Everything I do online is Reading Maria. So like Instagram, TikTok, you can go ahead and follow me everywhere. So I started my book blog as a way because I know for the Centennial College program, um, like you had to go through like an interview process and things like that, which was totally chill. Like I stressed for like a little bit in university. Um, for that for no reason because it was so easy but anyway so again I did my blog and I used that as a way to like build up my resume um it was a great way to like get books Penguin Random House was like the first I guess they were Penguin books at that time I really can't remember but they were the first people to send me a book obviously and I was just really happy and little did I know that that was the world of publicity and marketing but I figured that out later on um anyway so after I graduated with my English degree I got into the Centennial Publishing Program and there I was like, oh, I'm really not cut out for the editing world because this is just, I was so bored in class, like just, ugh, like editing things, like, I don't know, it was just really boring. So I'm like, let me start a bookstagram because everyone's talking about marketing and sales and 
even then like the class is just I don't know it's really hard to teach marketing and sales for book related things because like now that I've been in the industry for a little bit it's just like oh okay I learned everything on the job but I mean it was helpful in the sense that like you get used to the the vibes um <laughs> you get used to like kind of you really don't get it like the actual like cycle of a book until you're in the industry but that's the kind of stuff that should be paid attention to when you're in the class so because the main reason I really wanted to go to Centennial was because um you had to do a internship like there's other programs here in Toronto like there was the Ryerson program you have Humber um I mean those are the two main ones I know I don't know if there's anything else but to get to do the Centennial program, it was actually required before you graduate to do an internship for you to graduate. So that's why I really liked the program. Um, and that's why I really wanted to go into it to begin with. So I did that. Um, I did my internship at Wiley Education. It was a nonfiction publisher, educational publisher. Sorry, that's what I should say. I mean, nothing against Wiley, but I mean, the uh, I just did not like the environment at all. It was clearly not for me. It was some, I don't even remember what I did. All I remember is like I was looking up professors and getting their contact details if they were available online so they can later contact them for like, you know, to pitch their books to them, which I don't think they actually pitched books to them. Like I was just kind of doing stuff for six weeks for whatever, but... I mean, it was okay. Like, I had something to do at least during the day. And it was at Young and Eglinton, where their office uh, still is. I mean, I think the last time I walked by. Um, so, I mean, it was close to me anyway. So, I mean, it was good. It was a good start. I, I'll give it that. Um, and then while I was at Wiley, obviously it was like just six weeks. So, I was panicking to find a job or something I can do. I actually interviewed for the marketing internship at Dundurn Press, which is the company I work at now. Um, I didn't get it to begin with, but then luck be have it. I guess I was very lucky at the time. Whoever they chose just backed out after. Um, so yeah, it was like the last week of my Wiley internship. And I'm like, they called me basically to see if I was still interested. And I basically said like, heck yeah, not in a professional sense. Um, but I was so happy. So then that's when I actually like got the real marketing experience at Dundurn Press, like as their marketing intern. They were at King and Church at the time. So like it was a bit farther for me, but it was like, honestly, it took me about an hour and a half to commute there <laughs> in the mornings. But I'm like, you know what? It's an internship. Ooh, this is signed too. Sorry, I'm just discovering some of my books are signed and I didn't even know. Anyway, so it was quite a commute there. Um, and it was like my first actual nine to five. Um, I was tired as hell because I just, oh my God, it was, I was a mess at that time. I was like early twenties, just trying to, I was just trying to get into publishing and whatever. So that was a three month internship or 16 weeks. It was definitely like from May to maybe about like August. Um, so again, like they had no job opening. I was so sad because I couldn't, you know, I like things easy in life. So I was just hoping that they would hire me, but I never got hired. So I, again, like it's publishing. So there's always, it's, you got, it's kind of very be in the right place at the right time kind of thing for publishing, I find. So then, um, so my internship with Dundurn was coming to an end and I had no idea what I was going to do. I was very prepared to stay unemployed, <laughs> basically. Um, but then I got a call from a friend who was working at Today's Parent at the time. She, because we did our publishing certificate together. So they were looking for people to do um, like their mommy tester program. So basically I was mailing out like products. I was emailing mommy bloggers and then mailing out products for them to test and then sending them the, uh, the former, like the quiz or like whatever to do after. So definitely not the most exciting magazine job, but at least I can say I worked in magazine publishing for a time because it was at the Rogers place at I forget where like it was a very nice building I walked by the kiss 92.5 studio every day like on my way to the floor or something and I just loved looking in at Ross and Mocha I hope they don't remember me because I was probably that really weird person just like staring and walking as I walked by um their booth because like it was just so cool it's like literally in the middle and then you have a little cafeteria area and if I had the chance to go back to that building just for like 
fun. Um, I totally would because it's beautiful. But now magazine publishing is, again, that's a whole different world, a whole different side of the business. Um, I don't know how it's doing. I don't really pay attention to it, but I do know that there's a lot of layoffs usually. So I was mailing products out for two months and then I finally got, sorry, I'm just dragging another pile of books slowly to the side of me. Um, yeah, so I did that for a couple months. Then I finally landed my first, it was part-time, but it was good enough, um, my first marketing and publicity assistant job. Uh, it was at a very small company. They're still around, which I love them, Wednesday House. Um, you should go check out their books because all they do is just BIPOC authors or like authors from marginalized communities and things like that. So I really loved it. And that's the first time when I'm really like, oh, okay, like I really, it, like I learned how to consciously choose what I read well, during my time at Wednesday House. So it was really great. Um, very small team. So it's like I was literally doing everything for marketing and publicity. So like I was, you know, emailing uh, websites, like pitching things. Um, I did a little influencer blogger program with them, but I don't think they've actually sent anything out since I left, um, which is fine. But like, I mean, I just feel like there wasn't, it wasn't that much of an impact there that I would have liked that influencer program to have. Um, but ever since again working at Mwanzi House, like I've been more conscious of like picking up more BIPOC authors or paying attention to like publishers and like trying to do what I can to like promote smaller companies and smaller, you know, like lesser known authors, which makes me happy and which also is why I love working in Canadian literature specifically because I just feel like it's that much it is harder to like get you know things for your books and stuff like that but it's much more um satisfying when you actually book something or whatever for your author so i was doing that for literally two years um and then oh my god i was working on less about 10 less than 10 books a year i mean nothing exciting but you know it's just there's like it's different with smaller publishers because like you really don't have a budget you don't have you know like you're not looking at these things you're just publishing books and then like just putting them out into the world kind of thing which is fine for you know it's a good start for authors especially in like when the when the um industry is so convoluted with like millions hundreds of thousands of authors a year so i mean you have a publication under your name like that's fantastic but I mean I just kind of wanted more um and I was feeling that way for quite a while and then lo and behold um uh, my current manager the marketing and sales manager at Dunder Press she randomly messaged me on Instagram of all places and she's like hey like there's a job coming up um you know it would be really great if you could apply or something like that and I'm like I looked at it I'm like cool I didn't think anybody remembered me from Dunder Press but sure let's do it so i applied um i remember oh my god i'm that one annoying person like i didn't hear back from them for like weeks <laughs> and stupid me because my friend is like oh you should just email them and like see what's going on so i emailed and oh my god so embarrassing she emailed back saying yeah like they haven't um interviewed people yet and you know they're just waiting they were just sitting on it for a bit which is fine <laughs> And then like literally the same week or like a week later, I've just, they emailed about an interview and stuff. I'm like, oh God, I should have just waited the week. Like I was going to, but um, whatever. So not my best moment, but it's fine. <laughs> not to say that it's not okay or not to email people when you're like waiting for an interview or something. Cause I guess in this case it was fine because like I was asked to apply, but, um, but just personally, like for myself, I would never do that, but like, I was just told like I was just doing what other people were telling me because they said it was normal but I don't know I just I felt very annoying and my to my manager if you're watching this right now I apologize <laughs> thanks for hiring me all right so then I did the interview I feel like I never interview well um I don't know if I was the first choice again <laughs> for this job that I'm currently in but I did get it eventually so I'm happy. Um, I've been here. It'll be two years in November 2022 and I'm thriving. Um, I've had a great career year so far, I think. So I don't know what else I can say about my journey to get into publishing besides that 
um i've been very lucky again like i kind of said before it's mostly about or quite a lot of it is about right place right time kind of thing um or like people remembering you or again like my bookstagram is basically my resume um and any bookstagram that i use for work or whatever like any online social media stuff like i uh, like i make sure that that's good enough to put on my resume for you know whenever or you never know who's looking at things like that um so that's kind of how i approach social media and it paid off because like again my current boss she knew i did instagram and i guess she checked me out and saw that i had like twenty thousand followers or actually no i, I think i had 13 or because i remember i had a real go somewhat viral for around that time period so i definitely had like 11 or 10,000 at the time and then i gained like 2,000 followers because of my reel between the time that i interviewed and the time that like they let me know that i got the job um yeah i that's such a weird thing to remember but like because she probably looked at my instagram and saw oh you know she's got like 10,000 followers or 11,000 followers like that's what we want for our instagram so i guess that's kind of how it worked out in my favor um yeah so that's kind of my journey of how i got into publishing like i said i knew i wanted to do publishing for the longest time um and yeah so i just kind of made it happen so yeah i think if you want to get into publishing figure out what areas you want to go into obviously i can only speak for the marketing side because that's just what i do um i really i know editorial is like a whole different world but i think if you figure out what area you want to go into obviously marketing and publicity publicity obviously marketing and publicity is a lot easier to get into because there's i feel like there's always jobs even in sales um editorial it's a lot harder to find like an in person like an in job role or in company role whatever fancy name you can call it if you do want to get into publishing it's a lot easier when you're when you want to get into marketing so uh, like let's say you're like like you always see stories of like bookstagrammers turning into book publishing professionals so i think that would be the easiest way because as you're ooh, as you're being sent books um like you're getting sent arcs like three two three maybe four months in advance or something like that so like you're getting used to the publishing cycle and how publishing works in terms of like publicity and influencer marketing and things like that so you're getting you're so you're getting used to like seeing the book cycle kind of and then you're also you know like you're talking with publishers you're talking with the social media people you're talking with publicists and things like that to get hired um you know what i mean so like you're making connections that way it's a lot easier you can easily go to a book launch or book signing and like say hi to people things like that so i think yeah in terms of marketing that's easier i'm not too sure about the other side of publishing so like the production side the editorial side um i would imagine it's the same but i all would also imagine that it would be easier to get like a publishing to go to a publishing course where you can actually do an internship and make the connections and hope for the best because it's hard out there sometimes i want to talk about also like what i do in a day because i feel like people glamorize publishing and it's <laughs> there's i mean it's fun but like it's not as glamorous as maybe you might think it is so what i do in a day at my job um good question <laughs> i'm always asked like what's it like like what do you do during the day so the first thing I do is because again, like I work on, I am at a bigger company at Dungeon Press, like, so I do have a bigger team with me, but very much like all the social media stuff and any other marketing tasks, like that's usually on me to do. So like a typical day would be, I obviously keep on top of social media. I check it, I post on it. Um, I make sure links work, I answer messages, I comment on things, all that stuff. The usual hustle culture and grinding on social media that I do for my regular social media, I also do for work. So it's just sometimes it's social media overload and you'll see me like whenever I take a week off of work or something like that's literally my time to just decompress from both my social medias because like work and myself because it just gets a lot sometimes um but i do love it don't get me wrong like it's fun just you need a break sometimes <laughs> so yeah do all the social media stuff if there's a newsletter that's coming up like the week like the next week um 
I will do that and I'll make sure it's set. So we do different newsletters for different lists. So um, like we have a library list, we have a bookseller and then a consumer one. So I do all of that. And actually our new publicist, she she's taking on the author newsletter. So I've got one less newsletter to do during the month, which is fantastic for me because it's kind of like my downtime to do something else. Um, I will make, sometimes I'll make graphics, sometimes I won't like for a special promotion that we're doing online or like any campaigns like endorsement campaigns, um, pre-order campaigns, things like that. Uh, what I feel like I'm missing so much of my job, but like, you know when you do something for so long and like you're used to doing it, so you just don't think it's worth mentioning <laughs> sometimes. Um, oh gosh, what else do I do? I obviously do our net galley reviews, like not reviews. I do the request, oh, requesting. What am I talking about? I approve or deny. Sorry if I've denied you before. Requests from Dundurn Press. Ooh, this is pretty. Look at this inside, Mexican Gothic. No, sorry, Velvet was the night. Oh my goodness, wrong book. <laughs> Mexican Gothic was her first one. Sorry, I got very excited by this. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I obviously, I will do our net galley, Edelweiss. Um, I do that. I don't upload to Edelweiss, but I do upload and control what titles show up on our net galley account. Oh, what else do I do? I am always like proofing inserts um, or marketing inserts for our arcs or our digital galleys, things like that. And yeah, I don't know. I feel like, again, like I'm very under, I'm really underselling my job because like I feel like I do so much more in a day, but like I just can't think of it right now. It's Saturday. Like I'm just really tired after a week of working. So I apologize. But um, yeah, I mean, like we do influencer marketing. We... Uh, Sometimes I will, there's a ton of meetings that I go through. So whether it's coming up with marketing plans for upcoming books or checking in on titles that are coming up in like two months or something. So like the marketing plan meetings are funner, I think, because we're just bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, so we're planning out probably books like, like right now we're talking about books that are coming out November, December, we're moving into January actually now. So that's kind of how we meet and plan what books are, like what we're gonna do for each book and things like that in terms of like ads, um, social media campaigns, publicity and things, stuff like that. Events, we all talk about it like all these months in advance. Once in a while, I'll meet with authors. Um, and as in once in a while, like one-on-one -on -one between me and an author, it's like, very very rare um it has to be a special case for me to meet an author but which makes me sad because i love meeting authors like if i can meet all of our authors and just talk to them about like social media or things that um we can do with them on social media like i'd love to do that but there's not enough hours in the day so that's basically what i do in a day i mean i get like completely underselling my work duties or my work day maybe i'll do um a tiktok video of like what i do in a day in publishing but it's not exciting <laughs> so i think if i've got like a few books left so i should probably wrap this video up but i think if you do want to get into publishing you should just make the connections um know what area you'd like to get into and then just work towards it so whether it's a publishing certificate whether it's completely online or um, in person or something like that like there's something for everybody you can do that and then you know just try to make connections I think it is definitely easier if you do an internship if you can get an internship because even if you don't get hired after your internship they'll again like I was lucky enough that they remembered to think about me like when a job opened up um so they so yeah like you just do that and do the internship, make connections, and if you don't get hired, you don't get hired, but at least you have something on your resume where, you know, that you can use to, ouch, to, <laughs> to uh, um, apply, because even if you don't have, like, full-on book publishing experience, at least you've got, you, you know, you've got into the role with transferable skills, which is fancy. Um, and places to look for jobs if you're in Canada, of course, Quill cool Inquire um publishers like i know penguin random house harper collins they do a lot of job posting on their linkedin so if you you should always have a linkedin um 
So make sure you're keeping an eye on that because I mean, they do usually post stuff on there. Uh, you can always check their website. I know The Fold, the Festival of Literary Diversity, they have their own job board. Indeed, I find Indeed is more for um, like if you're looking for freelance editorial positions or something like I find that there's a lot more of those types of jobs on there versus like on Quill and Quire. So like just kind of keeping an eye on it unless you're like me and just obsessively check like Quill and Quire like a million times a day, um, then yeah, like just keep an eye out for job openings there. If you're in the US, again, like I know, I don't know if there's any specific job board for publishing. I know Publishers Weekly has them, I think. Um, probably the Publishers Marketplace, maybe they might have job postings, but I don't know. I know definitely Publishers Weekly. I don't know if you need a login to access it, but you can try that. Or again, like the publishers, I find the US publishing companies, their job boards are a lot better than ours, maybe because the US always has job openings. I don't know, but um, yeah, that's just kind of what I've noticed. Like just like looking at job boards like all the time, basically. Not that I'm looking for a job, obviously. I Like I love my job, but just I keep an eye on things and like, I'm so weird. I like to keep an eye on like who's who's looking for what, what are the job requirements, um, things like that. Like I just like to know these things. Then I can apply it to my current job and then, you know, whatever, whatever happens in the future. You got to be prepared, right? Always be prepared. Anyways, I think I rambled enough. If you're still watching, thank you. Um, thanks for watching me emboss my books. I did quite a good pile. There's millions and millions of other books to emboss, but... Ooh, that almost fell. But I'm gonna go have a coffee now and make a mug cake because I love mug cakes. Of course, if you have any questions at all about publishing or things like that, definitely leave them below. I'm happy to answer anything. If you need a follow-up video, I'm more than happy to like talk about my job daily. Um, I love it so much, like I said. So don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe, obviously, because I'm fun to be with. And I hope that you listening to my publishing journey helps you with your own publishing journeys. Maybe you want to work in publishing or you're thinking about it or things like that. So I hope I made it an exciting world for you. Um, again, I'm probably going to be editing this video and be like, oh, what am I talking about? Like, what's the point of this? But whatever. We'll just go with it. Um, thank you for listening and I will see you for my next video.